I'm digital artist Aaron Rutten, and today I'm going to be reviewing the new features in Rebel 4. The performance in Rebel 4 is faster overall, and we'll be able to see that in just a bit when I start working with the brushes. But before I do that, let's get a few of the smaller features out of the way. If you hold down Control on your keyboard and hover your pen, you're going to see this red dot which represents your brush cursor. The diameter of the circle is the diameter of your brush, and the opacity of the circle is the opacity of your brush. The four arrows surrounding the cursor imply that you can move it up, down, left, or right to get different results. So if I tap and drag the cursor up or down, I'm going to control the opacity of the brush. Dragging it down makes it less opaque. I'm using the Oils tool, and I'll just select Rough Oily for my brush preset. If I paint a stroke, you can see that right now it's a fairly opaque brush, but if I hold down Control and I drag down, I can reduce the opacity, and now I get paint that's much thinner. There's less paint loaded on the brush, or maybe the oil paint is more diluted. Just as well, I can drag the cursor left or right to make the diameter of the brush larger or smaller. So if I want a fine tip brush or a really large brush, I can switch back and forth really quickly and easily. This is a great shortcut, and I really like the way that you can control the opacity and the size really easily. I'm not going to go too in-depth into it, but there is also a color profile and color proofing mode that have been added to Rebel. So if you're going to be scanning or photographing artwork and then bringing it into Rebel, or perhaps if you're going to print your digital art, then these features will help you more accurately observe the colors on your monitor. Even better, there's also a feature that lets you see if colors are out of gamut. In order to manage colors, we'll need to go to the Edit menu and then choose Color Management for this document here. For the default profile, I'll choose Adobe RGB 1998. That's the color profile I use to create this artwork. Then we'll need to go to Edit Assign Profile and just make sure that Adobe RGB 1998 or your intended color profile is selected. Then you can go to the View menu and here you have options for proofing colors, which lets you simulate how your artwork will look on different devices, either on another monitor or when printed. Or you can show the gamut warning, which will show you colors that may not print exactly as they're shown on screen. For example, all of these greens here on my trees and then some of these different colors in my water here. This stuff is probably gonna come out a lot more dull than it looks on screen, so I just wanna keep that in mind. Because I'm working mostly for screen and not really printing my work, it's fine if my colors look vibrant. I don't need to change that. It's only a consideration if I'm gonna be printing. There are keyboard shortcuts for these as well, Control Y and Control Shift Y. The next feature that we'll look at is layer groups. I'll go ahead and just paint a little blob of color here, and I'll create a new layer at the bottom of the layers palette and I'll create a blob of a different color. These are two independent layers, and so if I wanted to, I could move them around by transforming them. I could change the order that they're in by having them overlap differently. But if I want to transform or move both of these layers at the same time, I need to select both of them and then transform them. A new feature in Rebel 4 will allow you to group layers, so now I can select both of these layers, group them, and then rather than having to select both the layers to transform or move them, now I can just select the group. The layers within that group are still individually editable as well. Next we'll check out the clone tool, which is found in the toolbar. It looks like a rubber stamp. This tool can be found in Photoshop, Corel Painter, and other applications, and it basically lets you sample an area, let's say one of these stumps here in the water, and allows you to then paint with it somewhere else. So it sort of clones it or transports it somewhere else. What I'm doing here is I'm holding Alt and I'm sampling my clone source, and then I'm just simply painting somewhere else on my canvas to move that source image there. The next tool we'll look at is the Fill tool. In order to demonstrate how this works, I'm gonna select black for my color, and I'm gonna use the ink pen here just to draw a circle. I wanna make sure that there's no gaps between the lines, so it's a closed shape. Then I'll select the Fill tool, which looks like a paint bucket. I'll choose red for my color, and let's look at some of the properties here for Fill. Right now we have anti-aliasing checked. This is good, this will make sure that when the paint goes all the way to the edge, it's a nice smooth edge. In some cases you may want the fill to be aliased, so you could uncheck that. But what we wanna do is we wanna check contiguous. Once we do that, the fill tool is gonna to look at the lines present in the document, and it's gonna fill up to that line. If I zoom in here, you can see that the edge is still a little bit rough. So I'll undo, we'll uncheck anti-aliasing, and we'll fill again. And you can see the difference that makes. It does smooth it out a bit, but what you may want to do is turn on anti-aliasing and then play with the tolerance. So let's set the tolerance to 33. Try filling again. Not quite there. Let's drag up 
rather than entering a number, let's try around 79. That's getting a bit closer. We can go beyond 100%, and there we start to eat into the line a bit, thereby covering up any gap that could be in between. Now if I zoom out, you can see I get a really nice fill up to the edge of that line. Now let's take a look at some of the new features that relate to brushes and brush customization. There are loads of new brushes for each of the tools, and you can see them here in the different variants. You can feel free to experiment with these. I'll show you how some of them work when I demonstrate the various media later, but there's some really great brushes here that add a lot of variety to Rebel 4. For example, we have this fan brush here that you could use to paint leaves on trees and things like that. It's a really great brush. One thing that's great about these brushes is you can very easily customize them and save them now. So for example, I'll go to my brush creator, which you can find in the window menu under brush creator. And here you could play with any of the properties. I could increase or decrease the spacing, have the maximum size be much smaller. I could add some paper grain, tweak the max size a bit more. And now I have something that might work really well for grass. So maybe this is my grass brush. If I wanna save this, I can save my changes as default. I can of course reset the brush if I want to, or I can save as new brush preset. So let's do that. Now I have a new brush preset. It goes into that same category I was working with. And now I have my own version of this brush saved as a preset that's different from the original. Now, of course, I'll need to reset the original so it goes back to its original behavior. You can save all kinds of properties when you save a custom brush. So because this is an oil brush, I can control the loading and the oiliness. And then of course, I'll need to update those changes by choosing save changes as default. I'll click on save again. Now I have something that looks a bit different. It's a bit thinner, and this might work better to put highlights on the grass blades. The brush creator itself has been updated to make it easier to create brushes. One really interesting feature is that you can add multiple shapes and grains to the stroke of a brush. So right now this brush is using this brush shape and this brush grain, but it's also using this brush shape and this brush grain. How it alternates between the different dabs depends on what you choose for some of these other properties. You could have that set to pen pressure, pen tilt. You could have it alternate randomly or sequential. Right now it's random. And so it's basically just toggling between these two different dabs and textures as I'm painting. And by adding a lot of variety here, I can create a more random looking brush stroke. The next new feature is tiled texture. To demonstrate how that works, we'll select the oil tool and then select knife two for our preset. You'll wanna expand the brush creator so that you can see more of the properties here. And if we look under the grain properties, here we can enable tiled texture. Now I'll go ahead and just paint a stroke here without tiled texture, and then I'll do one with tiled texture enabled. Now you can see that I get that nice texture within my stroke. I can control the scale of that texture and make it larger or smaller if I want to. I can also add a lot of randomization to it and control the strength and contrast of it as well. And this gives me a lot of control over the wetness of my paint, the texture of my paint, and even the randomization. In order to change the texture, you'll want to change your canvas texture. So for example, I could change that to a watercolor paper, and then I get a different sort of texture here. I could scale that larger. And then if I wanted to, I could change it back to canvas. It would be great if you could just change tiled texture independently without having to change your canvas texture. Texture smoothing is enabled for this brush, so the texture will be a bit smoother. But if you wanted it to be sharper, you could disable that. If you've been playing around with this brush, you may notice that it supports pen tilt. So I can keep my pen upright and make a thin mark, or I can tilt it and make a thick mark and everything in between. This brush happens to be a palette knife, so it's really nice that I can make a broader mark as if I'm painting with the side of the palette knife rather than the edge of it. This feature also works really well with the pencils. We can select the pencil tool. I'll select the craft flat preset in a gray color. I can sketch a circle with my pencil upright, and then I can shade with the side of the pencil to get a broader mark. In the shape properties, you can adjust the tip tilt. So if you want there to be a longer mark when you tilt your pen, then you'll want to increase that. I find that that maximum doesn't quite do it for me. There are pencils out there that you can sharpen and you can make the tip really, really long. That allows you to create a much broader mark. So I'd really like to see that tilt range expanded quite a bit more. Let's switch to the ink pen tool. I'll select black, and the next feature we'll look at is brush stabilization. I'll draw a circle and a few straight lines. If I wanna make this brush more or less stable, I can go to line smoothing. And here I have different modes like moving average or pulled string. 
I can also turn off the position smoothing. I can control the amount of smoothing. Right now there's a tiny bit added, but I could add a lot more. And now when I draw, it's really, really slow, but also very, very stable. I'm gonna go ahead and reduce this back down to zero. And now you can see that my brush is much more responsive. I can also smooth out my pen pressure if that's a bit too jumpy and it goes too quickly from thick to thin. And I can control the pressure sensitivity here as well. Let's try pulled string mode and I'll add a lot of smoothing here. This is a great mode for those of you who might be using a mouse. As you can see, drawing with my tablet, I'm able to pull this string behind my cursor and then think about the direction I wanna go. If I want a straight line that connects right here, then I can easily pull it to that point. If I'm using a mouse and I'm not able to control a pen, pulled string works really well for that too. So I'm using a trackball mouse, not the best mouse for drawing, but as you can see, I have a pretty decent amount of control. We'll go ahead and turn off line smoothing for that. Now, if you've created a lot of your own custom brushes and you'd like to share them with the Rebel community, you can do that from the bottom of the brush presets here. There's a share brushes button. If you click on that, it opens a menu that will allow you to share your brushes. There's also a new feature that will let you share your artwork as well. Now let's move on to what you've been waiting for, and that is a demonstration of the new acrylic oil and watercolor brushes here in Rebel 4. And let me just say that I am very excited to play with these, so let's take a look. I'm gonna have the visual settings panel open. You can find this in the window menu. So let's start with oils. We looked at the fan preset earlier. We could use that with a dark green color, put in some really nice trees and different things. I can tilt my pen so that I can paint in different directions here. It's really cool. If I want that paint to look thicker, I can increase the impasto. I can make it look a bit more clumpy. If I want it to look thinner, I can reduce the impasto. And then notice that that doesn't control the impasto per stroke. It controls the impasto for the entire canvas. Same for the gloss. I can make all of the paint on the canvas more glossy or less glossy. You can also control the visibility of the paper texture and the paint texture as well. So right now we're using a thin paint brush. This is a collection of brushes that have thinner paint, but there's also thick paint. So for example, I could select rough oily. You can see it has really nice thick paint or we could try thick dry. You can see this paint is really, really thick. And again, I can control the overall impasto depth here. If I want it to look less glossy and more flat, then I can do that as well. We'll go ahead and add some other colors to this and we can see how they build up. Now, when you use heavy pressure, you're going to cover. If you use lighter pressure, you're just going to kind of blend it into the paint. And what's really game changing about these brushes and how they work is the way that they interact with paint that's already on the canvas. That paint pulls off paint and it gives it its own texture when that happens. It feels very much like if you applied paint to a canvas and then you did the Bob Ross technique where you drag your knife across and you let the paint come off of the knife naturally. This is what's happening here and it feels and looks really natural. If you press down harder, then you're gonna to start to kind of blend the color a bit more and you can mix colors together really nicely and easily. It feels very intuitive. This is probably the closest I have come to feeling like I'm working with real paint in any art application I've tried. Now I can switch to acrylics and acrylics are similar, but they have a slightly different behavior. They're a little bit flatter and they just look and feel a bit different. I'll put down some pinkish colors here and I can blend acrylics into my oil if I want to and kind of mix them together. Again, I can play with that impasto depth that controls the impasto depth for the entire layer. I can play with the wetness and loading of the acrylics and I can really customize this to my heart's content. Now let's take a look at the different paint modes we can use for our paint. I'll select the oil brush. The first mode is paint. I'll use the knife to put down some color. I'll select another color and I'll paint into that. With this mode, I'm just covering the layers of paint underneath. I'll select the next mode, which is paint and mix. If I use heavy pressure, I'm gonna cover, but if I use lighter pressure, then I'm going to mix those two colors together to make an intermediate color. The third mode is paint and blend. So if I use heavy pressure, I'm going to cover, but if I use lighter pressure, then I'm going to blend. This is a little bit different than mixing the paint together. The fourth mode is blend only. So no matter what kind of pressure I use, I'm only blending, but if I use heavier pressure, I'm really going to mix it up versus if I use lighter pressure, then it's going to be a lighter blend. And the final mode is erase. I can use this to erase the paint and scrape it away. I can also add layers of paint. 
and say we'll add some yellow here with the paint mode. And I can select the erase mode, make a smaller brush, and then I can scratch away at that paint to reveal the layers of paint underneath. The dirty brush mode has also been improved. We can enable that here. I'll select the paint and mix mode, and let's select gray for our color, make my brush bigger, and just drag some of that paint out. And you can see that when the brush is dirty, it's pulling some of those colors into the stroke. If I turn off dirty brush mode, then you can see it doesn't do that. It's just gray and it just covers with gray paint. Now let's check out the watercolor tool. We have watercolor and we have gouache. Let's just use the watercolor preset here. I'll pan over here and I'll put in some watercolor over here off to the side. Might make it a bit more opaque. As you can see, it bleeds out really nicely. But if we go ahead and we add some tilt by going to the tilt panel and we drag down here, you may need to go into watercolor behavior here and maybe add a bit more water in the watercolor properties. And now we get these amazing watercolor drips. This is the best dripping watercolor I have seen to date. But what's even better is I can take some yellow, put this yellow into it, and let's check this out. The color mixes together in a very natural way where yellow and blue make green rather than gray. And that's because we're using the RYB mixing mode, which just makes it look more natural. You can turn this on and off if you go to edit, it's called natural colors. So if I were to turn that off, then when I mix those two colors together, it just wouldn't look as natural. There's also an option for gamma correction, and that just helps the transitions in two colors blend together more naturally. Unfortunately, at this point, these do not work for the oils and acrylics, but hopefully that implies that they will work in the future, and that would be awesome. There aren't too many art applications that have natural color mixing like this, and I feel like that's something that's really essential because it makes you feel like you're painting traditionally, and aesthetically, that's just nice. Another thing that you may notice if you were to paint some of this watercolor on top of some of the oils, it's now glazing, and so it's tinting the layers underneath rather than covering them opaquely. That glazing property can be found here, and you can change it from transparent paint to semi-opaque or opaque paint. So if I wanted to, I could choose opaque, and then I can cover that oil paint rather than blending with it. But just look at that, look how natural that is. It's beautiful. It just really blew my mind when I saw it the first time. These little intricate details here where stuff's just bleeding and blending together. And this brings me to another feature, which is blending wet and dry media. You can actually do that. This wet media is actually flowing in between the three-dimensional contours of that thick oil paint that I put down earlier. And so if we go back to, let's say one of these oil paint brushes, we select the knife, we get like a lighter color and we use lighter pressure, we can very lightly go over that and pull off the paint on those higher elevation areas of the paint that we put down. Then if we go in and we select blue and we go back to our watercolor, we can put down watercolor on top of that and that watercolor will trickle and flow into all those peaks and valleys and it's just so beautiful to look at and it feels so natural. Now of course you're gonna need a pretty fast computer for all of this stuff to render out in real time and not be slow as molasses. So keep that in mind, but just look at that go. I don't even have to do a review. We could just sit here and look at this all day. <laughs> a lot of what's been holding digital art back has been the lack of realism. And this looks and this feels natural. It's really so much farther ahead of the other art applications out there. You guys have nailed it here. So that's it for the major new features in Rebel 4. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe to this channel for more digital art hardware and software reviews like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.